notes. Okay, hopefully it's working now. Let us know if you can hear us, Guy, if we've been trying a new software, a new hardware, so it's a new experience for us. And welcome to a new live stream. And today we have our friend Dennis with us, joining us here in Copenhagen, where we are. And uh, yeah, it's a new uh, software, so let us know if you can hear us well in the comment section. And uh, so, Dennis Pascal has been a big part of our healing journey. He is part of our soul family. And he has been trained in the completion process by Teals 1 in core energetics and in theta healing, three different healing modalities. Yeah, and as you know, our intention is to live in community. And we've been going in, in this path since many years now. And one of the most important things if you want to live with people is how to resolve conflict, how to create connection, how to come to a common decision that serves the community. And because many of us coming with heavy packages from our parents, from our society, from our trauma, and especially in our community, because all of us are coming from different backgrounds, we need those tools to resolve um, the conflict, uh, kind of like shape the edges so our interaction is not um is becoming smooth becoming um, so that we can reach decisions together that we can understand each other yeah. but not only that you know like uh we've been using and working with many different healing modalities also for our personal well-being you know it's a such a journey of becoming an integrated and more embodied human being Mm -hmm. And we want to talk today about these different, few different healing modalities um, and look at what are the differences. How do you know which one would serve you the best? What is the most effective one, you know? Because yeah. some people, you know, swear by a specific modality and that's mm -hmm. the right one. Also, yeah. how, how do you know? Yeah. And, <laughs> and we've been also like, I thought myself, I was like very attached to one kind of modality and then I was like, Wow, that's the, the completion process. That's the best, absolutely the only thing that you need to have. And all your trauma will be solved. And everything will be fine in your life. And I was like, even almost like fighting with some friends who mm. disagreed with me. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I guess many of us will go through this because it actually did help us at some point. And I, I think that when we became like so attached to the method and not so not being open to other ways other messengers and other tools and we are risking being a bit dogmatic and I hope today's live stream with our friend Dennis will bring maybe new perspective or show you new tools that might help you as well. So Dennis, yes. what would you say is the difference between the modalities that you've been trained in? Because you've been trained in three pretty different kind of modalities. Yeah. Um, I think the best way to start explaining this is that we need to look at whether it's a top-down approach or bottom-up approach. So what I mean with that is sometimes, let's say with energy healing, for example, what we do is we identify with universal energy, with source, with you know oneness ultimately, and through that high frequency, we like stir up our unconscious and see which beliefs inside of us find in alignment with our highest truth. Mm -hmm. And through that top-down approach, we start shifting these beliefs and patterns inside of ourselves. Whereas with, um, well, let's say, for example, the completion process, where we identify with an emotional trigger that is, you know, an emotion, let's say, we go the other way around, we go from bottom up, we fully let ourselves sink into the emotion, Mm -hmm. And through that experience, we help those inner parts or those yeah, inner children of us have a different experience and thereby they shift into the quote higher frequency, meaning they feel more empowered, safer, more nurtured, whatever those needs were that weren't met at one point. We now get the chance to see them now. So that's the other way around. So would you say that uh, the completion process is a bottom up approach? where we basically, for those of you who don't know, in, in the comp 
completion process, you basically use a trigger. So that could be a strong emotion coming up in your everyday life. We go into that emotion and we, but usually there are memories coming up from when you've experienced that for the first time. And this points to an unresolved trauma. And then with that process, we basically release um, that stuck emotion and uh, create repair. Just technical question. Um, Sound is quite bad, is someone saying. Um, it's hard to understand what I'm saying. Is, is it better now? Let us know. If I talk to the microphone. Talk to the microphone. Hello, hello, test. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. let us know. Yeah, so as a summary, Denise is saying that some approaches are bottom up and others are up down approaches. Yeah, top so down, whatever. Top down. Yeah. 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 Right. So and then how is, so this reminds me of um, like in parts where, for example, that's also more of bottom up approach, I guess, in parts where we basically identify these different sub personalities within ourselves, but it's quite a mental approach actually. So when I look at the differences between what I've been doing so the completion process and the parts work and the parts where things can be more mental process sometimes it can be mm -hmm. yeah i mean it depends also on the person and how they approach to it i i personally try to when i do it in myself or with clients i try to bring it more to the body and always like bring it like how it feels to be in this part rather than ab like observing the part from above and that could be like a different approach of how it's done from it to another how also your person, your personal intuition maybe guide you to mm. guide the process. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I can see that in general, <laughs> like for example, comparing to the core energetic process that you did with your cousin, a lot of it in the body, like you would be like moving and hitting the cube and yeah, like doing some crazy stuff. So before we yeah. get there to describing what that is, um, Basically, how I see it is that the CP, the completion process, is kind of like emotional approach, going straight to, to the emotion. The parts work is, tends to be more mental approach at first. You know, you start from understanding mentally what's happening. Okay, and then we go to the emotion. Mm -hmm. And energy healing is more connecting to higher frequencies. So it's kind of like uh, bringing in the source vibration. So, interestingly now, what is core energetics about? How is that different? You get the mic. I get the mic. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's not going to be easy to describe it all in a short way. Um, so, first of all, I am trained in core energetics. I've been training in core energetics since, yeah, before I even met Teal and the completion process or energy healing or theta healing. So for me, core energetics is really the foundation of all the other things that I, yeah, use as an add-on or as something to like um, expand on core energetics. Let's say, so core energetics really works with the body as the instrument to see and identify where emotions are held, where the energetic supply of life force isn't flowing or not you know, balanced, and we work with the body to access those blocks and to free the true self. So what we do in core is we, like two different things. First of all, we, we look at people, um, like we try to identify what their experiences were in different stages of childhood, because we all go through different stages in childhood, developmental stages, and in each stage we, have certain impulses and needs and depending on how much they were met and allowed and accepted we develop some trauma or maybe more um, than in other stages and all of that which is very unique in each case uh, translates then into what we call a character structure we are never just like quote a character structure we are you know beautiful whole human beings but our behavior and, and certain patterns and emotional histories can be, let's say, 
um, summarize in what we can call the character structure. And so depending on the character structure, we have certain energy blocks in some parts of our bodies and some other blocks or leaks in other parts of our bodies. And we then look at the human body and see where is the energy stuck, where, you know, is it not embodied, and how can we support the person to actually free this energetic, um, well, life force so it can flow fully. And the goal is really, first of all, to rebalance the energetic flow in people's bodies, which allows people to express their full authentic self and to also really expand their capacity to sustain energy and to experience life. Because the more we can actually contain ourselves and energy, the more present we can be in life and also experience more of the fullness of life. So that's one part of the description. And the other part is we, in core energetics, we talk about mask, lower self and core self which is actually translatable to parts work. So the mask is the adapted behavior that we use in society to cope. Like a protector or manager. Yes, yeah. So it's like the way we, we learned how to function to keep ourselves safe. And then underneath that is the lower self, which is not, it's called lower self. It's a technical word, but it's no judgment. It's not less or better than any other parts. It's just one part. The lower self is all the hidden, suppressed, strong emotions that we, quote, don't dare to express, which our mask is trying to keep us safe from. And when we work through those layers, through the mask, and then through the lower self, by allowing all of these emotions to flow, we access the core self, which is our full, authentic self, where our abilities are, you know, for to give and receive love, to connect, to have, you know, a full, open heart and to yeah yeah and to um live from that fullness within yeah. well, so we, that will be translated to the self if we are talking about ifs and the what you what they call in core energetic the lower self would be translated into the vulnerability or exile um yeah or like the vulnerable child or the vulnerability or the so we might say that in all I have my own mic. <laughs> so in all these modalities, really the kind of if there is a goal, the goal would be that we get to be fully our true selves, be authentic and that we no longer have to suppress anything, that we get to be free, yeah. essentially, you know, and authentic. Yeah. So that's what unites all these modalities. <clears throat> yeah, so we don't trade our authenticity for connection. In community, we create this safe connection circle where we can bring more and more of our self, of our authenticity, and maintain the connection. Mm -hmm. This is why we believe that community is the next stage for evolution. You're such an advocate. Yeah. He keeps <laughs> recruiting people all the time. So, yeah. what I hear that as the difference then in core energetics to these other modalities we mentioned is that it really acknowledges the role of the body how we need to kind of release the energy in the body that it's not enough to although it's great if we can for example in parts work we can understand the parts we can begin to really see ourselves and in the completion process we can really you know try out the emotions or let it flow emotionally mm -hmm. it is still necessary to see okay or it can be helpful at least where in the physical body is the energy stuck? How can I involve my physicality in my body yeah. in the healing process? Is that correct? Uh, yeah, absolutely, I agree. Um, yeah, I want to add one thing. So the thing is, what we do is, or depending on our character structure, we we have all kinds of defenses in place where we our body and our system is trying to protect us from going to certain places. Like that's totally normal. And this is also, if you look at individuals and why they prefer one modality over the other, it's, it's understandable if you look at their character structure, why they kind of resist one modality more and tend to go to the other. Because let's say, for example, 
with people who have very early developmental trauma, typical for them is that they actually, they feel unsafe in the physical world. So they have very strongly developed um, upper chakras, let's say like their seventh crown chakra or their like uh, third eye chakra is very developed. They have very sophisticated creative minds. So for them, they might naturally be drawn to energy healing because it's safe for them. And this is how they, you know, can, yeah, make sense of this reality. And for them, it's much more challenging to actually work with the body because that will bring up more intense emotions. So, yeah, it's also really depending on our own trauma history and defenses uh, that will lead us towards one modality or the other. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. I see also so much that many people who are identified with the intellect uh, tend to gravitate towards arts work because it's quite a, you get to really kind of understand and uh, see your own psyche, you know, you get to kind of map your psyche and um, it's also a bit, let's say, less esoteric of the... Of the I would say, yeah, it's more, it's more being mainstream. Yeah. Uh, Arts work, it's more accepted, and there is a lot of like yeah, scientific study about it. While you find very little scientific study about energetic healing, mm, yeah, yeah, that's true. And then, yet again, um, people who do have easy access to their emotions might gravitate towards um, CP completion classes because for them that comes naturally. Yeah. So, and here, the interesting thing is what you gravitate towards might be the best modality for you in the beginning because that's your doorway into getting more in touch with yourself mm -hmm. however um, at some point it might not serve you anymore to stick with that one thing because the whole idea is to really to become an embodied human being and to integrate mm -hmm. all these different areas the spirit the mind the emotions the body yeah. so at some point it might actually be necessary for us to challenge ourselves and go to the very thing that we resist the most. <laughs> <laughs> and remember to be self-loving in that, like don't bulldoze yeah. yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's not really that one is better than the other. They have mm -hmm. take a bit different approaches mm -hmm. and depending on what you need, what feels safe enough for you to begin to open up, that's what you need in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. At least in the beginning. I'm so curious what you yeah. guys have gravitated towards at first. Like, can you tell us like about yeah. your personal okay. journey? Yeah, I can share. And meanwhile, guys, please, if you have any comments, let us know. If you like this, uh, find this information helpful, please like it and share it with ever, with ever who feel interested in this topic. And uh, yeah, that will help also YouTube to recommend it more to our subscribers. So help us with that. We really appreciate it. And yeah, I can share about my personal experience, like my healing started with um, what I would call spirituality 101, like from doing yoga and meditation, and doing like two hours meditation a day, and a lot of um, um, like positive thinking, uh, fasting. I've been doing a lot of those things until a moment where my trauma started to surface and I start to face a lot of dark things coming through me and like feeling depressed, feeling suicidal. And all this meditation, all this uh, practice that helped me for so long was not serving me anymore. And I was in a time where like, okay, that's obviously not working. I need something else. And that was the time where I get to really practice shadow work. Although I know it feels fun since I think a few years before that, I haven't really gone through the deep shadow work and that was kind of like the switch where I switched from doing the kind of like the light work to the real shadow work and doing the completion process and other processes that kind of like arts work, completion process, but mainly focusing on the completion process and releasing a lot of pain and trauma. And I remember once I felt like I'm so in peace with my sadness. Like I felt that was the time where I actually started embracing my sadness and grief that kind of like shifted something really big in me that I was not feeling miserable for my sadness. That kind of was the embracing of the dark or like the unaccepted emotions. Mm -hmm. And um, 
later on at other point I start graduating Gravity. gravitating towards parts work and making mm -hmm. like this mind map of what's alive in me and how which part is taken over so that was also helping a lot and um, yeah right now I feel like I'm having like mix of everything like mix of the body work the osho work the core energetic connecting more to my spirit guides and my awareness and integrating the body and the mind and everything yeah i feel like that's what's helping me the most and helping my clients mm -hmm. as well and i'm still opening because what i saw in my life that everything is like everything is keep evolving so i'm wondering what will be next to mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah what about you then is what were you gravitated towards first and why yeah so um my journey started with core energetics I was a dancer. I mean, I've been studying dance, and that's where that's I met. So good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Sing as well. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I'll own it. Um, yeah, I was I was training, and I had this one teacher who um, she did client technique with us, which is a deep, deep uh, tissue work where you learn how to release superficial muscles, so you can access the deeper ones, which allow you to move more easily and she told us because we did like a one week intense with her she told us you'll probably have lots of emotions come up because emotions are stored in the body and that really struck me because that was new information for me and so I went really hardcore with it and then at one point I approached her and said what can I do like you see my body move you see me you know you know how I breathe like what is it that I need to do and she pointed me towards core energetics so for me, that was a whole opening, how, you know, when we engage with our bodies, it releases all kinds of things and, and to bring consciousness to it also. Like I really wanted to understand why am I feeling all these things? Where do they come from? So I went with that. Um, and then I discovered the completion process by Tio, because especially after practicing core energetics after a while, I felt like I wanted something a little bit more subtle because I did come with um, developmental trauma as well, and I needed something that I could just do myself, which felt a little bit more um, well, less energetic because sometimes it was a bit too much. So I went with that and I had amazing results. And then I still felt like something was missing because I, I'm very spiritually minded. And I thought I need something more like really, really like how can I say this, spiritual for myself. Mm -hmm. And that's where I found Theta Healing, which is, again, a total different system. And what I love about Theta Healing is that it trains your psychic abilities, your intuitive abilities that we all have innately. Um, and you can awaken to those when you practice this modality, for example. And it helps you to access intuitive information so much faster. Like now, I immediately smell a limiting belief like this in myself and other people <laughs> and then I can go there and immediately shift it and there was this moment where I thought but how am I going to combine all of these different systems I knew I was on the right path because I was really passionate about all of these I was like what am I going to do like they're so different and that's where I started to get the answers that you can actually combine it all and that in different moments different things will make sense and that's also to finish this part where I discovered that if you do theta healing, for example, it triggers an emotional response. And then later on, you can actually do the completion process or core energetics. Kind of like bringing the emotion to the, to the top. So mm -hmm. like removing that blockage, just energetic blockage to the emotion. But exactly, yeah. And this has actually been my um, initial doubt about energy healing is that question really can you bypass the emotion and the body and yeah. just shift something and your physicality will shift because you know if the emotion is stuck in the body how can you just shift it like yeah. that but that was that was my biggest concern i thought at the beginning that this is a way of bypassing the emotions yeah so that's what dennis is now saying that it doesn't have to be the case it doesn't have to be the case and also there is certain cases where actually in my in my experience, my personal experience, daily eating was the only thing that worked because sometimes 
okay, this is a bit like spiritual, how can I say this? It's very woo-woo now, but sometimes we have certain patterns that are kind of encrypted in our energetic body, which is not even our physical body. And they are due to our soul's journey. And I've learned through Theta Healing, you can access those things and shift them because those things are also contributing to how your body experiences life and how you experience emotions. So having that tool was really helpful to release these kind of really weird things <laughs> that no other modality could access for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my own journey. I also, like, re relating to this, I also experienced, like, before when I was, like, in the kind of, like, only completion process and only pills when teaching, I was not really relating to the old past trauma. And from my personal experience and my personal healing journey, I get to experience how my last life actually affected me this life and how I carried some of that trauma with me here to manifest first in my childhood and second in many experiences I've had experience here. In a right. later amount of yeah, so now you're mixing in some past life regression as well, <laughs> which is, it's not something we've actually been doing uh, much because it's yeah. not uh, we don't believe that it's necessary um, unless it comes to yeah. the surface during a process yeah. that you're doing but I personally or we we don't aim to go to previous life we just see what come in this moment and track it down to where it comes from mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm mixing your points you know <laughs> <laughs> you know all those guys like me as this very organized person and you are chaos <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I just wanted to mention also that, um, interestingly, for myself, I've used CP quite a lot on myself. But actually, even that trick used to trigger me because I had such a huge need for just presence for whatever comes up. That when someone would try to do a process, like now visualize this, I would get really angry. Like I would be really like, Never I would get really angry on Ram for trying to do a process on me because I so, so just needed just being with what is whatever comes up without any structure. Yeah. And when, when we change this, like to do it like more intuitively rather than following the steps, we had like really amazing results that yeah. was not kind of mm -hmm. like, a, yeah, like step by step. That's I think like a, like a learning experience for many practitioner to that maybe the, the attuned way rather than exactly following step by step. Yeah, so what I wanted to say related to that was that if you find it difficult with different processes or you feel resistance to them, it could be actually that uh, what you really need is just presence. That's mm -hmm. also its own way of doing things where there is no agenda because the agenda itself that you know that now we're doing this and now mm -hmm. we're now follows this step yeah. that can feel already like you you're not you're not allowed to be where you are in this moment mm -hmm. so and, and this is i would suggest that this is the best thing you can do for yourself when you are holding space for yourself without a facilitator to just give that presence for whatever mm -hmm. is there without needing to go somewhere with it yeah, I mean, of course, the presence is important in any process, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. The presence is kind of like the uh, rock corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I want to add something here. Um, what you just described is literally what we do in core energetics, where we don't have an agenda. Of course, we, we are tuned to the body and to the person, and we might have like an idea where it could go but we really work with the information that is presented in each moment and take it from there. And there is no such thing as an attachment to a certain outcome or a goal. And, and the other thing I wanted to add to all of this is um, for some, or I, actually I believe for most of us, in certain healing experiences, we actually need touch. We need physical touch. We need to feel that safety of connecting with other humans um, because that's in many cases where we experience a lack or a, a shock in some, you know, in childhood. Mm -hmm. And this is also something that I love about core energetics because it's very, very physical. I mean, we use, 
we as therapists use our own bodies also as an instrument to to make connection to give support with our hands to to touch or to to give just a sense of containment and that in itself is healing for some people who didn't get that enough in childhood where there was maybe even shame around physicality with each other and that's something that i sometimes missed in the completion process and also in theta healing where it's really you know you sitting there and meditating <laughs> um it's a very like yeah maybe i shouldn't have said it like that but you know even though you have a practitioner you're you're there going through it internally and coinergetics gives you you know much more tools where you can actually experience physicality and that helps us to connect more with our bodies and to ground in in certain cases yeah i can tell that dennis enjoy more in person sessions <laughs> what that you enjoy more in person session like to have the person working with you in front of you in the same space it actually really depends i love to do both because this is again where we're all unique and different and at different stages in our journeys you know some people for them it's actually much better to do it remotely or you know without touch let's say and other people really need that experience of touch and i mean i love variety and flexibility in my business which is why i love to work with people in person and also remotely mm -hmm. it gives me the variety that i'm looking for keeps it exciting <laughs> i see yeah for me i love the most uh, group work like when there is like group experience like what we do in our retreats and workshops that's like most tempting for me and the mm. most enjoying because mm, that's can, another dimension you know yeah we can integrate so many processes <laughs> like the group energy especially if the group is all able to be present and familiar with this work so we can use the group energy to focus on one process and bring healing it's like most but this is a little bit i would say a slightly more advanced because each person ideally would have some capacity at that point to hold space for themselves and mm -hmm. what comes up and be that container. So but that's that's like the best thing ever to process. Yeah, I totally agree. I feel like it's the most challenging but the most healing as well. And we do this in our workshops. We used to do online workshop where we bring it back in when we settle down and also in our retreats and events. So and we have some questions. Yes, that's what I've been wanting to do for the past ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Sissy, I don't know how to say your full name, so just go with Sissy. You wrote MDMA therapy in the intro. Do you think that this can be a sustainable healing path? I doubt. Well, I wrote it there as an example of the different healing modalities that are out there. I personally haven't even tried it, although I have had um, therapy with plant medicine. Mm -hmm therapeutic use of plant medicine yeah so i can't really answer this question mm -hmm. yeah i'm i i have many friends and here like we just met many many friends who have tried it and i think the most important thing is the practitioner like how he bring it like when you take the medicine are you focusing on bringing awareness and love to the inner children and to the uh, excite are you liberating the trauma are you releasing so i think that's the most important is it is there like an integration do you feel the integration afterwards because um i i saw in many plant medicine or uh, psychedelic uh, um, healing therapy there is a lot of bypassing so it depends a lot on what you exactly you do in that case and i would definitely integrate a lot of emotional release and body release and if it if it's done then way this way i think it's powerful but i always i always advocate for the natural way like you don't need to use plant medicine unless you're really feeling stuck and there is like of course some special occasion ourselves we use we um, take in plant medicine it has helped us a lot but i feel like this a lot of work can be done without it as well yeah i want to add i also have never experienced mdna my personal opinion is that everything that supports you to be in your body and to learn how to navigate your own life force and to strengthen the ability to contain your life force is useful. Whereas if it brings you away from that, 
I, I wouldn't recommend it. And this is the blind spot that I see sometimes with these kinds of modalities. And again, I haven't tried it. It's just my, my view. Sometimes people use that because they want to avoid the like, strong experience of emotions. But actually, that might be the place where they need to go. They might need to learn how to express those strong emotions, you know, things like anger or hatred or rage. Because in expressing that and in learning how to navigate those intensities inside, they find back their, you know, balanced energetic supply, which will help them to experience life in a more full way. And if you go away from that by using MDNA or other things, sometimes it can bring those emotions actually. Okay. But then you need to have the piece of consciousness with it where you yeah. learn how to express it. Like how to integrate it and like make friends with it and not like, oh, I'm going to release it because it's bad for me. Like, yeah. You need to, the integration process where you embrace it rather than, ah, oh, I'm going to release it and get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. And once again, we're coming to the, what's the point of all this healing work? I see a big part of it is to be really an of embodied human being who can be mm-hmm. here and now. There's a reason why we are manifested here into this yeah. physicality. So yeah, why not exactly. be here fully, you know, yeah. with, in with our every cell yeah. and not be somewhere else, you yeah, know, you in our heads or exactly. You didn't come here to open your third eyes. Which you can, is which, amazing as well. Which you can do, of course. <laughs> 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 Maybe you did to integrate the physicality with the third eye. I, I believe know? I believe our personal experience on Earth is to embody the earthiness and to experience all the sensation, not just like the third eye or the uh, connecting to the spirit guides. Like I and I see in a lot of spiritual circles, like there's a lot of focus on those things, and you can see that their sex life sucks, their uh, relationship finance. to food sucks, finance sucks. Like all these things, like need to be embodied first. Mm-hmm. And move like step by step. Ideally, we will integrate the spirit though and bring it yeah. here as well. You know, it's not either or. Yeah. I think that's the whole purpose is to like be able to bring the other dimensional, the the, the higher energies here. Mm-hmm. You know, not that we go there and then we're feeling yeah. shitty in the morning again, <laughs> but that you know that we embody that. Yeah, and I, I would like to add to that also, this is really where our healing journey can be so unique. You know, like I said, someone who, because of their unique history, has very highly developed, let's say, upper chakras and is very much connected to spirit already, their journey in, in this life will be about how to ground, how to be in the body and bring all of this amazingness that they can perceive up here to the earth because yeah. i mean as you might know uh <laughs> we're going through a total awakening shift in in the entire world and we're like leveling up to some higher awareness so people with that kind of life path actually you know they contribute to this process in a huge way and then there's the other people who are by nature who by how they experience life already very grounded and for them the journey is to open up and trust a higher truth or higher dimensional yeah. frequency, which for yeah. them is a challenge because it brings up all these fears of mistrust and betrayal. Mm-hmm. So all of our journeys are yeah. beautiful and unique and it really, it's about embracing it in my opinion and to, um, to trust that it's also for, you know, for a reason that you go through what you go through. Yeah, I would leave a uh, last chance if you have any questions. We can answer it before we close up. And there's another question. Do you like to read it? Well, Clara is saying that she got into Theta Healing. I can attest to how powerful it can be. It is. Yeah. And um, Lighting the Dark Remote Viewing is saying, I have tried all these modalities and I still have severe ME and I was born with HH. The answer to all questions are out there somewhere. You have to know what the real cause of illness is. Mm -hmm. I don't know what is ME or HH. Yeah, if you're still with us, maybe you can share. And yeah, we're coming to an end for this uh, live stream. If you 
like it, please invite uh, your friends to share it, to see it. And, uh, mm. If you have any question, also let us know. Mm. And we are three of us. We offer, um, we assist uh, our soul, big soul family, and our awakening journey. So if you feel called to work with any of us, you can reach out and you can see a link for Dennis's page on the description under this video and our websites as well. And uh, yeah, we love doing this uh, live stream. So let us know what you like us to talk about the next time. Mm. Yeah, if you have, do you have last words to say? Uh, I had something that I wanted to bring up actually, and it's like uh, maybe I should have mentioned it earlier. I'll um, do it now. Go ahead. So I'll do it now. Um, because uh, I've been actually through a major uh, healing crisis that was physical. It was all about cleaning up my diet and purging toxins out of my body. So this is oh, like... Oh, that's really <laughs> different. Okay. It's a healing... You could talk, say it's a path of healing that comes really from the body. Like it, it wasn't in any way really related to... I didn't look at the emotions or the energy at that point. It was just let me just clean up my physical vehicle from all the toxins. And that opened me up so much to being able to feel my emotions and to be able to perceive energy, like yeah. really coming from that physical material yeah. point of view. And a lot of our YouTube videos are actually inspired by Mia's journey. So check out the uh, raw and the fasting videos. There's yeah, a lot that's of why wisdom. we've made a lot of videos about, yeah. you know, detoxification and stuff. That's what I wanted to mention. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dennis, did I share something? Oh, yeah, some words. Uh, <laughs> Put you on the spot. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm blank now. I yeah. think I've said it all. Um, yeah. I just want to encourage people to stay open and curious and, um, you know, open minded. Like, if you feel like, you have found your modality it could be that it works for you it doesn't mean that it has to work for everybody else and also i want to invite you to explore different modalities because for me personally it really turned out to be so valuable that i did and now i get to combine all these different tools and um yeah i have much more benefits from that and i process way faster than i used to because i have all these like amazing tools so I, I really believe there's no such thing as just one way, even though for a certain time, it might be that one way for you and then stick with that, of course. And then if you ever feel like I, I have this need to open up something else, then explore that and trust your inner guidance also to, to get you those tools that you're looking for. Yeah. That's it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Powerful. Thank you so much for being with us. If you without chaos. <laughs> and if you watch us for watching us for the first time, subscribe because there is more wisdom coming through this channel and more also lifestyle videos. And thank you for tuning in today and see you in the next one. Ciao Ertling. Ciao ciao. Okay, now Stream 